what happened to those eggs if they are never getting used? So those eggs are frozen against your name and they belong only to you. Even your partner doesn't have control over those eggs. Those are completely only yours. So do you think, I mean I actually think um, probably our parents or moms should have these conversations so that it becomes more not natural and normal for us. So I think two things are helping in this matter. One is social media. Yeah. And I think post COVID, if there's one good thing which has happened, <laughs> it's definitely social media, yeah. bad as well. But the amount of information which is available out there and such excellent content coming out. But tell me what happens if I don't want to use my eggs? Like, you know, what happened to those eggs if they're never getting used? So those eggs are frozen against your name and they belong only to you. Even your partner doesn't have control over those eggs. Those are completely only yours. And when you do egg freezing, you're given a consent wherein you sign to say, this is what I want done. Oh. God forbid I die. So okay. you can destroy those eggs. Now, of course, in India, we have a certain law. We have to give it, keep it for about 10 years and we have to give it to the central government uh, repository. If at all, those are not to be used. We just can't throw them away like that. But then can they be used by... The government for some for else? research only if you allow okay only if i have given my cons consent yes on it. yes absolutely wow i think that's just too much of information um so tell me what would you advise uh to young women who are building their careers uh who are doing other things from a career perspective as well as egg freezing perspective i'm sure you would be in a better position to talk about this about the taboos of egg freezing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, surprisingly, only a week back, I told one of my friends and the immediate reaction was why? And I said, it's, it's a, you have to learn about it or know a little bit about it. It's, it's the right thing to do. And uh, I know my mom is not going to see this, so I can talk probably. <laughs> but uh, my mom still does not know that I am looking at getting my frozen and not looking at an IVF. If she gets to know today, she'll probably freak <laughs> out. Uh, so there is a huge taboo around egg freezing. And I think that is the reason uh, I really wanted to do this because I have been told four years back and as I said, and since last two years, uh, me and my husband has been thinking of doing it. But we just don't know the answers to so many questions that leads to this whole confusion and delays. And uh, I just wanted every girl like me to have answers to this so that probably they can make this decision far more quicker than, than now I'm going to do. Any other advice, any other so suggestions that I you have? I think that would be exactly what you said. With social media being so active now, yeah. with so much of information being available, I think it would be wrong for us to have the ostrich syndrome where you put your head into the sand and assume that everything is going to be hunky-dory around. Maybe there is a very interesting term called reproductive life planning, which one needs to talk about uh, with themselves. You talk about which school you're going to go to, which college you're going to go yeah. to, what career you're going to have, what is it that you want to do, what startup you want to start and you plan everything, yeah. even what you're going to wear tomorrow morning and your breakfast and stuff like that. Yes. How come you don't talk about reproductive life planning? Yeah. How come you don't take a step back and say, this is a reality. Today, I have certain priorities. Maybe my work, my, my lack of a partner or whatever it may be. That's important for me. But what is also important that I understand that there is a biological clock which is yeah. ticking. And when I do decide to come for it, I might have missed the bus or I might have more problems at that time. What is the harm in maybe skimming the internet, maybe going to a gynecologist or a fertility specialist, having this discussion? In fact, there is a way where you can even chart your um, ovarian reserve. So say, for example, I have so many couples who come in and say, look, we've been married now and uh, married for the last two years. I'm sorry, but I don't want to have a baby for the next four. Yeah. Can I come back after four years? And I tell them, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. But why don't you use science to your advantage yeah. rather than doing it arbitrarily? So we spoke about ovarian reserve testing. Why not get ovarian reserve testing maybe every six months if you're above 35 or every one year if you're below the age of 35? And we start plotting it on a graph. 
and then you know how your aware and reserve is coming down and you also can then say okay you know what this is the point where i don't want to take a risk anymore yeah. maybe that chart being in front of you also helps you um, understand reality a little better that it is going down rather than you know everyone just talking about it and you probably not realizing it so i think that's very important i think from a career perspective women are empowered today i don't think they need any more empowering and if your career is as important as any man's then why should your fertility be a hindrance yes. of who you wish to be tomorrow and if there is a safe insurance that is available for you of course with its own riders why not take it up and do what is more important to you at that point in time rather than you thinking about it or your family telling you that your only job is to make babies at that point in time so do you think i mean i actually think um, probably our parents or moms should have these conversations so that it becomes more not natural and normal for us like as i said i'm right now scared to even go and tell her this but uh, but do you think there is a way you know we can put it in brains of uh, people around people. us or parents or families because you know growing up if i start having that thought or if that's told to me the way you said you know we discuss our careers we discuss what startup we are doing or we discuss even in school you know whether we are taking a science or a commerce that's a part of discussions that parents have with their kids but these are not the discussions that people have parents yes. have True. and i think only if that can happen uh as you said only women start freezing their eggs if they don't want to conceive uh so quickly or early in life uh then they have to do it in their 20s and that's not the kind of knowledge you'll get it from a gynae because you might True. not go to a gynae by True. then right True. the only people you're surrounded by are your parents your family yes. your probably sister and if even if you're not comfortable with a brother or father at least your mom or sister can talk about it so i think two things are helping in this matter one is social media yeah and i think post covid if there's one good thing which has happened <laughs> it's definitely social media yeah. bad as well but the amount of information which is available yes. out there and such excellent content coming out so that becomes your daily teacher and that teaches not only the the daughters but the grandmothers as well yeah. so they are also kind of you know scrolling through internet and instagram all the time yeah. that helps two i think companies also of course for their own selfish needs and reasons are also promoting egg freezing so facebook and google do uh, you know promote for uh, egg freezing they even pay for it of course they want their um, female force to work mm -hmm. longer yeah. not get pregnant because it helps their company maybe that is their ulterior motive but at the end of the day they are helping a cause yeah. so from these areas also a lot of information is coming in mm. and as when you and i spoke about it you have so many female friends yeah they are exposed to social media and the internet yet there are so many misconceptions about egg freezing so forget about the grandmothers <laughs> and the mothers yeah. it's the young women yeah. as well who do not know about this True. who feel inhibited in talking about this or even accepting the fact saying if i am thinking of egg freezing probably i don't have a partner yeah. probably i'm not going to get a partner probably it's a wrong thing yeah. which i'm doing so i think unless that that taboo with that age group is broken automatically if that is done everyone else is going to get educated yeah. and i'm sure as you said the rebel that you are if you want to do it <laughs> you will do it whether your mother agrees to it or not especially if it's a good thing no absolutely in fact uh, two of my best friends uh i am forcing them to go and consider this absolutely uh so you right that you know if if we as young women uh, start talking about it or start you know making it sound not like a taboo or a big deal um uh, i think it will bring a huge difference to this world and of course people like you talking about it sharing your experience sharing your concerns um makes it so much better and bigger and someone like you who's out there who's a role model for so many women coming on this platform and talking about it definitely helps a lot so thank you so much for doing this thank you so much dr rajiv i think it's always an absolute pleasure hearing so many things from you um, 
I think it's a it's a no brainer for me to now go and get this cut done. Thank you. Thank you so much.